some of you watching Headspace regularly are people of faith, as am I. Some of you are not. And if so, maybe this episode is not going to be the most interesting episode for you, so you can skip it, or maybe stick around and learn something new. Now, if you're a person of faith, you want your career to succeed. You want your calling to flourish. But you want those things to be successful and flourishing, fueled by faith. And if that's what you're looking for, this episode is for you. Here we go. Before we start, I wanna ask you for a huge favor. If you're on YouTube, hit like and subscribe, help us spread the message. If you're listening to this on Spotify, iTunes, on any other podcast uh, platform, please give us a review, give us a rating. We would love your help to help us spread this channel to a bigger audience. I see two paths to success that are fueled by from different sources, right? One sort of the larger category is fueled by ego. So it's fueled by your drive, your desire, your willpower, your talent, all of this is, is fueled from, from who you are. The other path is fueled by faith, is fueled by your preferences and passion, but it's also fueled by something that is bigger than yourself. Now, these two paths, I've tried both. Um, I like the second one better, the faith one, and I'll tell you why. The ego-driven success is really high on outer game, on skills, on performance, but usually tends to end up being low on inner game, on the beliefs, right? And what happens with, with that path is that you can achieve success. First of all, the level of success becomes unattainable that you think of because you're just limited to yourself and your abilities, your passions, your drive, your grit, all of those things, right? Um, so it's high on outer game, low on inner game. It becomes Success becomes either unattainable or it becomes unsustainable if you reach it. So I went that route and actually achieved a whole bunch of success. And my success became unsustainable over the long haul. And obviously, what's the point of fighting, of suffering, of working so hard if you can't maintain it, actually grow it, right? The second path is success fueled by faith. It's high on outer game and high on inner game. So it's high on skills and it's high on beliefs. It's fueled by something that is beyond just you, right? And that way, your success can become A, more attainable, and be much more sustainable over the long haul. I'm going to unpack exactly how that works next. How do we use faith to fuel and attain success? And how do we use faith to fuel and sustain success? We're going to talk about that in more detail. But first, there's a foundational thing that we need to discuss. Uh, the Christian faith has this interesting gap. It has this cultural aversion to business. And if you compare it to the Bible that has actually a, a, a biblical integration of business into the Bible, there's a gap, right? So there's so much amazing stuff about business success, the marketplace in the Bible. And because of this lens that filters those things out, because of this cultural aversion, we're missing out on a bunch of stuff. So I'm going to share with you a rapid fire, a few quick insights just to give you an idea, right, of how that works. Jesus talks a lot about money right? Uh, but we interpret it as talking a lot about greed, which is actually not true. There's so much more there. Much of the mission and work of the apostles and Jesus was actually fueled and sponsored and financed by private donors, not just collections of churches. Um, our role in creation foundationally is uh, missed out on uh, quite a bit. If you look in the very first book of the Bible, Genesis, the first chapter of the Bible, Genesis 1, men and women, humans, are giving dominion over all creation. And we have to dig into what that means exactly. But in broad strokes, it means that everything is God's property, and we are put as stewards over that. We have dominion. We have authority. Um, if you look at the Old Testament, David and Solomon, there a lot of their moves, a lot of their conquests, a lot of their sort of uh, insights are business insights. And their strategies to actually flourish the nation of Israel, which brought about the golden age of the nation of Israel, as you probably have read. And there's so much to learn there. It's incredible. Even the term economics is derived from a biblical term, a Greek term called oikonomia, right? And it means stewardship. And it sort of relates to us as human beings, 
um, the, if you remember the parable of the shrewd manager, for example, the term used there is oikonomos. He is the manager of his master's property. So he is in charge of multiplying. We are essentially multipliers and co-authors and co-rulers. We have dominion over creation. So this foundational calling for human beings to be able to be creators and multipliers of things uh, is powerful. And if we are disconnected in our identity from that, we're missing out on a whole bunch of what was designed as part of our big um, overarching role. So how do we attain faith-filled success in the first place? In no particular order, it's just important pieces that I want to point out to you. The first one is this, from obviously Genesis 1, is dominion. Claiming your dominion is claiming your calling, claiming the assignment that was given to you. You have to discover it first. You have to pursue it with all your heart. And then you're also empowered then to succeed in this, right? In Ephesians 2.10, it says, For we're God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Good works means every action. Every action, including commerce, including career, including calling. And the reason why that's super important that you can tap into faith in this particular way is that if you have a calling, it's a unique calling to you, according to Ephesians 2. No one can compete with you in being you. Align your efforts with your design and you will be unstoppable. Develop your inner game, your beliefs, how you see the world. Another term for it is meta skills. Meta skills are higher level skills that essentially accelerate the development of all the other skills. Does that make sense? So, and the reason why that's important is because Outer game is abundant. There's a lot of people who can do what you do comparatively on the same level. But inner game is very scarce. Let me illustrate. If you remember the biblical uh, story of David versus Goliath, right? There's a whole army. There's this huge guy. He's intimidated, intimidating the army. No one in the army wants to fight him. This one guy comes out of, the, out of nowhere and confronts him and wins. What's that story illustrate quite literally? is that all of these trained warriors had a lot of outer game. And arguably, David did not have more outer game than they did. Like, there's probably one or 10 or 50 or 100 warriors that were better warriors than David was. What David had was inner game. That is scarce, and that sets you apart, right? Joseph did not have more outer game than his brothers. He has some combination of inner game, his belief system, the way he sees the world that made him the most powerful person, the second most powerful person in Egypt, the biggest nation, the most powerful nation on earth at the time. The 12 apostles, they did not have more outer game than the Pharisees. They didn't know the Bible better. They didn't memorize scripture better, but they had been with Jesus. Their inner game was superior. Um, and I can go on and on. Obviously, the scripture in general is filled with, with stories like that, inner game, supernatural stories. I'll tell you a few examples just from my life um, of people that I've mentored and helped with. Um, Max, he's a, a friend of mine who I mentored, and he was a world champion in weightlifting. And after he retired, um, he had trouble sort of readjusting to life. So he didn't have a job. He was really heartbroken. Uh, he was divorced. He, uh, there's all kinds of things going on. So his inner game needed some fixing. Now he's married. Um, he has kids, beautiful family. He has an amazing thriving business. So he's very successful economically. He's active in the local church community. And he is one of the top people in his sport worldwide in sort of the executive realm. Um, another friend of mine, he, his name is Jesse. He's a coach. He's a fitness coach. And he had an incredible outer game. And then we worked together. And he, But he was very anxious. There's a lot of anxiety, a lot of burnout. And we sort of worked on, on, on his inner game, and he has now a thriving uh, fitness uh, coaching practice. Um, another guy in Ukraine, he's a friend of mine, and I mentored him a long time ago. He was a pastor, and he rearranged his life in remarkable ways, was very successful as a pastor. And then during the war, we reconnected, and we started collaborating again. And together, uh, we helped thousands of people during the war in Ukraine. And my point is that his inner capacity to step out in courage in the middle of an awful war made him the savior of many, many people helped and, and transformed thousands of lives. Uh, I was just reminded recently of another friend of mine who I mentored a while ago, who was a Latin American entrepreneur, 
and he was just getting established and there was so much going on. So his outer game was fantastic, but his inner game was lacking. And with time, he just gained a lot of prominence, a lot of success. And now he's very holistically successful, right? And that's what we're shooting for. Something that we can attain because of our inner capacity of seeing the world a certain way. And he is a, a really influential businessman in his country. He's um, very generous to the church, to the local church, very active, very sacrificial. So these are just quick examples of people who have developed this inner game, this meta skill, uh, to succeed. And that's faith-fueled success that can be now more attainable because of faith. Another important skill to develop is the skill of renewing your mind. There's a remarkable scripture that everybody, of course, quotes in the Christian world, and we all love it. It's in Romans 12, 2, and this is what it says. Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. What I love about this scripture and I think sometimes we just skim over it, is that it has, it has an if and a then. If you learn the skill of being transformed by the renewal of your mind, then you can test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. 95% of our thoughts, feelings, and actions are subconscious, right? Everything from brushing your teeth, driving your car, even responding to social cues, even more complex tasks uh, are essentially 95% learned. So they're essentially circuits that pop up, little prog programs, software that pops up from past experiences. So we both succeed as a functional adult, right, in life, as a professional, as a, as a brother, as a member of a church, as a parent, and we fail on autopilot, right? Because 95% of what we do and think and feel is subconscious. So we can keep the stuff that works, but we need to reprogram the autopilot for the stuff that's not working for us, right? So I'll give you some examples that, are, that make it very clear that that is true. Um, you perhaps became a Christian, and before you became a Christian, you thought that it was probably it was probably impossible to actually follow the Bible and make that come alive in your life until you met people who lived like that. And then you go, oh my gosh. And it was not hard for them. Yes, of course, it requires effort, but they were doing this on autopilot, right? And now after a few years, there's a, a whole number of new things that you're doing as a believer on autopilot because your autopilot has been reprogrammed. It's the same thing with a healthy marriage. I didn't even know that could be done until somebody taught me and now my subconscious is taking most of the workload, right? And of course, I still make an effort to be a good husband, but my good, healthy marriage of 24 years is on autopilot, right? Um, so I would argue that David and Goliath, although amazing from the outside for the army and for people who are watching, was also an autopilot because he was... Uh, conditioned a certain way before that. So his action, this opportunity that came his way, became this explosive event in his life and the history of his nation because he was already renewed in his mind. He was seeing the same situation from a different lens. And the same thing can, can work on uh, in building a business, having more impact. All of that is attained by this meta scale called the renewal of your mind. Let's talk a little more about your mind. You are both a human being, a homo sapiens, and you're a spiritual being. Your physical brain, your physical mind is actually not wired for thriving, it's wired for surviving. So it acts a certain way in survival mode. But your spiritual mind is wired for thriving, for dominion, for flourishing. In 1 Corinthians 12, 15, and 16, it says, the person with the spirit make, makes judgments about all things, but such a person is not subject to merely human judgments, but we have the mind of Christ. Just think about it deeply enough and be inspired, right? Um, how it works on the sort of biochemistry level is that your physical mind um, that is wired for, for survival can focus a lot about what's not done, all the limitations, all the scarcity, the things that trigger you, the things that make you fear and sort of constrain. It floods your body with stress hormones, and you can't create in that state. In a state of survival mode, you cannot create. So what you do is you wake up and you do the same thing over and over again, and the same mind that built your past is re essentially rebuilding the past in the present and you continue sort of plateauing, and you can't really thrive and, and soar. But if you tap into your spiritual mind that is 
wired for thriving, for dominion, for creation, and for multiplication, right? You can switch that mechanism and co-author and realign yourself with how you were built to be as a spiritual being and be a creator. So if you learn how to win one day, to create a new day, not just the replica of, of every other day before, you can also learn how to create a new week, a new month, and then a new life. This brings me to the next thing. If you are a believer, a person of faith, you are, by definition, supernatural. You're more than just human. You're a spiritual being, right? So if you're aligning yourself with your assignment, right? If you're aligning, aligning and claiming your dominion, you are now going to experience supernatural things. And it's remarkable how we skirt those things because we live in such a sort of scientific revolution, very rational mind world. And we read the Bible and it's full of supernatural stuff, right? So why won't that apply? Why won't that, why won't that appear and show up and permeate our professional lives? I don't understand, right? Uh, but I can give you story after story after story in my life and people, and people that I've worked with. Uh, you know, I... Even when I was beginning to my to pursue my first career, I was just looking and I was so focused and I felt my purpose was to be a, an entertainer. And sure enough, people start popping up that give me completely sort of uh, supernatural opportunities, right? Um, I started a production company many years later and I started from zero and all I had was an idea and, and I built this very rudimentary free website. And all of a sudden the first client come comes out of nowhere and gives me a huge budget to work with. And that was my first project. Uh, when we started collaborating with Yuri, the person that I mentioned before on Ukraine, and there were millions of Ukrainians fleeing for their lives. And I sort of focused on that with a great sense of purpose, a great sense of calling. Um, I had people pop up out of nowhere and give me donations to help people uh, out of a 10 minute conversation, 15 minute conversation, maybe like a 20, 30 minute presentation somewhere, uh, which was completely disproportional to the effort I put in. But I think those things are supernatural, right? Um, I, when I work with people in my coaching program, early on, I say, look, once you put your intention what, uh, into this, once you start aligning these things and learning these meta skills, um, you, you will see serendipities. And you can explain them as serendipities, like out of nowhere, something comes in and I don't know what they're going to be, but I can tell you with certainty that it happens quite a bit. Uh, so it's really remarkable to start embracing the supernatural, that you are supernatural. And if you align yourself with the purposes of God, uh, supernatural uh, things will happen to you. So once you've acquired success through faith, how do you sustain success through faith? Let's talk about that a bit. Honestly, I think it's not complicated. If you think about your dominion, your role, your assignment uh, that came from above, essentially, um, we need to remember always that it's the authority that we carry, the influence that we have is derived authority. Matthew 6, says, but seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So what do you do? You love, you serve, you give, you be a good oikonomos, a good steward. Um, so as I'm developing my professional life across different disciplines, I've also planted a church here in Austin. I started a nonprofit for the poor called the Send Academy. Uh, we helped the, the poor and the, the people in mortal danger in Ukraine through the Ukraine Relief Network. Uh, I also participated in starting a church network called Renew Network. Um, I'm a delegate. I do missions. Uh, all of the stuff that I do um, side by side and because of my professional development and leveraging my professional ability is for the glory of the kingdom of God. And that's how you sustain success, I think. It's that you always remember that your authority and your dominion it is derived from something that is given to you. One more thing that will help you sustain faith-fueled success is joining the right tribe, right? Um, the number one predictor of your ability to earn more and have more wealth is dot, 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 your zip code, your environment. And that is both amazing and depressing at the same time, right? Because it feels like an unfair advantage if you're, but it's true. If you're born in a certain environment where people think a certain way, it sort of sinks in. So 
the advantage for that is that we can put ourselves in environments that shape our behavior, right? Find an exponential tribe. That's why uh, when I coach people, I coach them in cohorts and we have this whole community. If you're walking with people who are up to the same thing, they're using the same frameworks, they're fueled by the same faith, and they're aspiring together, um, their faith will, will prompt your faith and your faith will inspire their faith, and you will all be able to sustain this over the long haul. And it's actually fun and really enjoyable as well. It's amazing to be able to do life with people who are up to the same thing. People who want to make a dent in the universe, who want to do it through faith, fueled by faith and sustained by faith. And that makes all the difference in the world. Uh, so that's why we have a community, the Exponential Community, the Exponential Tribe in my coaching program, which incidentally, if you want to accelerate your growth, you can check out the website. And it's not for everybody, but it might be just the right thing for you to both achieve success and sustain success fueled by faith. Thank you so much for uh, listening to this or watching this if you're on YouTube. Uh, please forward it to someone who you feel this could benefit. And once again, like, subscribe, help us spread this. Uh, we want to spread this message, this value as widely as possible to as many people as possible. Thank you again for being part of Headspace. Oh, 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 oh,